Hey, Way fam, thanks for tuning in. We pray that today's message impacts your life. Let's get ready for this service. God bless everyone. Thanks for tuning in to the Way World Outreach Hope Online. My name is Pastor Robert. I'm the associate pastor here. And here we have Pastor Mark, our senior pastor. How you doing, Pastor? Doing great. God bless everyone that's out there. And I'm so glad that you're watching us on a watch party. And I pray that you have some friends and family there. And if you're there by yourself, this is the most important thing for you to know. God's with you. And we have an amazing word for, uh, for all of us today. We're in a season right now yeah. where, where this, is, this is a holy season for yeah, us. It is. Where people are really hypersensitive to God. Right. And this was, would have been a season where the churches would be full of people on Easter. Right. People, they, they take some time aside and they say, well, you know, we're going to celebrate Easter. This year is going to be really unique because we're going to be celebrating Easter in our homes. In our homes. And, and I really believe that this is meant, it's an assignment by God. He's saying, I want to invade the homes. I want my presence to be in the homes again. Yes, yes. Because if there's ever going to be a revival in our city, if there's going to be a revival in our nation, it needs to start in the homes. If it doesn't right. start in the homes, it doesn't matter That's what right. laws we put into place. That's right. If our homes are a wreck, That's right. it's over. And you just start and, in the homes. And also, if there's going to be a turnaround in our country, it really needs to begin not with the government. It needs to begin not even with the schools. Mm -hmm. It needs to begin in Christian right. homes. Love it. If my people who are called by my name, if they would humble themselves and seek my face and pray and turn from the wicked ways, I will heal their right. land. Right. And I really believe that God wants to heal our land, but he needs to right. start a revival in our Christian homes. Man, I love it, Pastor. What a way to kick it off. And just a quick reminder, um, this Friday, we are having a Good Friday service, 7 o'clock. Text some people, call some people. We're going to be online this Friday at 7. And our goal this year, too, this Sunday, is to have 10,000 homes watching us or watching the service online. How are we going to do that with the 10,000 well, homes? Well, this is how, imagine, imagine this. Just think about this. Jesus in 10,000 homes. Wow. Now we can do that. Powerful. And all of us need to just receive this call. Okay, I, wow. I will do my part. Say it with me. I'll do my part. I'll do my part. <laughs> all of us just do our part and we can get this done. First, let's make sure on Easter, even on Good Friday, that we attend online. And the next right. thing is let's do everything we can to get other th three other homes to attend online. We're not inviting them to our house. We're just saying this, have a, have a attend online, watch with us online, and just get some, get some people that were willing to say, yes, I'll watch it at home with my family. Wow, and we can, if all of us do that, we could get 10, Jesus into 10, Thousand homes. I would love That's that. That's powerful. And look at the, even at number 10,000, if you have three or four people in a home, that's 30, 40,000 people that's going to hear the gospel on Sunday. You know, our auditorium here only fits, I think, what, 2,000 max. We're going to reach 40,000 plus. So get on the phones after this, text some people. Let's start three watch parties. Well, Pastor Marco, let's jump yeah. into the, tonight's topic. If you have a phone, if you have a notepad, Pastor Marco, what are we going to be talking about tonight? What's our topic? Today, I want to talk about the most important subject there is, and it's the gospel. So today, we're going to title this, The Gospel Made Simple. And you might be saying, well, what is the gospel? Well, we're going to answer those questions today. Wow, that's awesome. And I see your first, your first point there. It says, we are commanded to proclaim the gospel. Can you share on that in that scripture? Can you yeah. kind of expound on that? Just think about this. This is the season that this command was given in. Jesus uh, suffers on the cross. He dies for our sins. He's buried. Then he resurrects from the dead and he has wow. a meeting with his disciples right before he ascends to heaven. Right. And what he's saying is, look, I've trained you for three years. I died. I resurrected from the dead. And this is what he says. This is your assignment, believers. Wow. This is your assignment, disciples. And this wow. is what he said in Mark 16, 15. He told them, as you go into the entire world. So they had an assignment wow. to go into the entire world. entire world. And isn't it great that today, as we're even broadcasting, that we could reach 
the entire world. That's right. Right now, our, our, our orphanage in Kenya, this is what they're doing right now. They're watching, watching right online, now. live right now. We are actually reaching the world. And he said, Man, as probably. you're reaching the world, See, right now we yeah. can reach more people than if we stayed in our building. Yeah, we sure can. And of course That's we're right. going to get back in our building yeah. and broadcast throughout the world. But right yeah. now we are broadcasting throughout the world. Man, right now awesome. there's no limits of who could hear this. There and the scripture is saying as you go into all the world. Wow. So there's an assumption here. We're supposed to go into all the world. And this he right. says, wow. proclaim the gospel to everyone. To everyone. So he said, wow. this is your assignment. One sentence. Proclaim the gospel to everyone. Wow. Every single believer is, is, they have an assignment to proclaim the gospel to everyone. everyone. Wow, that's powerful. You know, you're talking about that, sharing the gospel. I read a stat that said it takes around 100,000 Christians um, to lead one person to Christ. Hmm. There's a percentage out there that says this. Only about 15 to 20% actually share the gospel. Why is that? Why aren't Christians sharing the gospel? So why aren't we why are we fulfilling this this command or this commission yeah. or this assignment that God has given the church? Number one, I think we don't know the gospel. Yeah. So that's why today is going to be really important, because if we don't right. know it, how can we share it? So we wow. need to know it. It's not complicated. It's simple. Number two, I think we're there's a lot of fear involved. Yeah. And I would say there's a lot of spiritual warfare involved. That means yeah, is. there is a real devil. That, that doesn't want us to proclaim the gospel because the gospel has the power to save people. Wow. This message has the power to change someone's eternal destination. This wow. message has the power to set someone free yes, from an God. addiction, to heal yes. a broken heart. So there's resistance against yeah, the gospel. That's exactly so we're, right. we run into that. Yeah, we do. And I maybe here tonight, I said, man, I, I want to learn more about the gospel. And, that, and I'm so thankful that you tuned in because after this message, it's going to transform your life. So talking about the gospel, someone might be asking, what is the gospel? What is that? Well, I want to read a scripture that describes a little bit yeah. about Paul after he got, I mean, after they got this assignment, they passed yeah. it on. And, and now Paul's writing a letter. And as he says wow. in Romans 1, 15, he says, so my part, I'm ready mm. and eager to, to preach, preach the, gospel. the gospel. So he says, wow. for, so my, I'm going to do my part and yeah. I'm ready and I'm eager, eager to preach the gospel. Wow. Also to you who are in Rome, I am not ashamed of the gospel. Look at this. For it is the power oh, of God for salvation wow. from the wrath and punishment to everyone who believes in Christ as Savior, to the wow. Jew first and also to the Greek. So when we talk wow. about what's the gospel, yeah. number one, the gospel is the power of God for salvation. That means if the only way someone's going to get saved is through one method, the proclamation of this message call the gospel. Wow. Now, Paul says, I'm not ashamed. What he was saying, mm -hmm. I've overcome my fear of presenting the gospel. Now right. it's re been replaced with an eagerness to share this message that every single wow. human being needs to hear. But when the gospel wow. is preached, the power of God is released yes. to save a soul. Now yes. I want you to get this. We don't save souls. Yeah. God saves souls. It's the power of God that saves souls. All we do is proclaim the message and we let God do the miracle. Man, that is powerful. So what is the gospel? Number one it is the power of God for salvation. Also, what is the gospel? Number well, two. The, the gospel is the message that saves everyone who believes. So it's wow. a message. And it's and I would say another name for the gospel is good news. Good news. It's just good. Like it's that. a good news message. Wow. And another thing, the gospel is the gospel is about. Jesus Christ or Christ, wow. our savior. Now we could be preaching all kinds of great messages, but I want you to get this. If Jesus is not in the presentation and he's not proclaimed, we're not preaching the gospel. Wow. We might be motivating people, making people feel good. But if we're not bringing Jesus into the equation that he's the savior of the world, we're not preaching the gospel. So the gospel is about Jesus Christ. That's powerful. I remember when I was witnessing to someone, I was telling them about the church and that was great and everything. And, but until I finally got to the gospel, I remember I was talking to a lady and as soon as I mentioned, man, Jesus came, he could forgive you of your sins. She just started crying wow. and the Holy Spirit hit her. Right. But it wasn't until I started actually sharing 
who Jesus was and right. what he did. Right. Man, that's powerful. That name is powerful. Yes, it is. Yes. That's great. Now, if you had to break down the gospel, maybe in two or three parts or four parts, how would you break down the gospel? Maybe you're sharing it with someone. How would you break it down? Okay, so we're going to break this down into simple three parts. Three parts. So you can write this down. Three parts. And part number one has to do with our condition. Now, when we talk about the good news and how Jesus saves, I think we need to focus about on this. Make sure we're focusing on a, a need to be yeah. saved. So That's part good. number one, we have to get this done, is this, is we have sinned. So that's yeah. the first part. The first part is realizing that every single one of us has sinned. There's not a person that hasn't sinned. And the scripture says in Romans 3.23, it says, for everyone has sinned. We all okay. fall short of God's glorious standard. Wow. So we all fall short of glorious death. So who sinned? Everyone is sin. All of us. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Now you're talking about sin. Um, I think a lot of times us, we could, we think this sin is greater than that one or what is sin? Can you define what is well, sin? Sin is simple. This, I remember my mom doing a Bible study with me about sin and she goes, Marco, you know what sin is? I go, what is it mama? She said this, knowing what, to, if you know how to do something right and you don't do it, it's sin. So if you know how to do something and you don't do it, it's sin. And, I, wow. and she goes, you know why that's in the Bible? I go, why, Mama? She goes, because we're sneaky. And what we'll try to do is say, where is that sin in the Bible? Yeah. And we know it's wrong. And just because it's not specifically mentioned in the Bible, we start thinking maybe it's not a sin. But the scripture says, wow. if you know how to do right and you don't do it, it is sin. Wow, that's a good one. And that's James 4, 17. Remember, it is to know, oh, yeah, mine, mine, can't, yeah, mine kind of came out messed up. Can you read that scripture? Remember, yeah. it is sin to know what you ought to do yeah. and then not there do it. There it goes, right and there. And then not do it, yeah. I remember that time. Do you remember when I was a kid? I had a friend by the name of Randy. Yeah. He came over to the house and he actually, he stole some money from dad. Do you remember that story? Can yeah. you tell him? I, I, he, Robert was around nine or <laughs> ten years old. Me and Robert like ten years apart. So I remember this story and uh, his little friend came and my dad used to count his money because he had a business and he had cash, he'd take it home and he'd count it every single day. That morning, the next morning, <laughs> everybody's being accused of taking, he goes, where's my oh, money? I'm missing man. money. And he thought maybe I took it. He thought <laughs> maybe Robert that. took it. Well, we didn't know who, who took it and, and every, the blame was going all over the house. Well, his friend, Randy, what, what ended up happening, he came back the next day, he'd come every day to play. Yeah. He came and he went to my, my mom, he goes, my mom told me, if you're missing any money, I didn't do it. Uh, you know what? Uh, what no one need to said, needed to tell him that what he did was sin. It was just convicting him. Exactly and he was right. actually, he actually told on himself. That is so and you know, true. And if we don't deal with it, you know what happens? It's just a whole bunch of guilt yeah, I know. and shame. Or we just try to hide stuff. That's right. It doesn't work. It messes up our personality. It messes right. up our emotions. So we have to realize... Shh. We're sinners and we got a problem. Uh, man, I've been there before. And you're talking about sin. Um, what's the consequence of sin? So let's do with part two. So part one yeah. is just we have to just acknowledge everybody has to know, I'm, I'm, I've sinned. Part two of the gospel. And what we do is we start off first with the need to be saved. Part two is the consequence for our sin is death. Wow. So we've all sinned. But yeah. part two is there's a consequence. You know what that means? Wow is that there's nothing, everything, every choice that we make has a result. If we make good choices, what does it lead to? Good results. results yeah. If we make bad choices, what, it, what, does it, what does it lead to? Bad, bad results. results yeah. And that's why people go to school to learn how to succeed, or they go to a seminar right. to learn how to succeed. And what they're saying is, the way I'm doing it, it's not working. I need to learn a new way to do it. Well, God has set this up for us oh. to know that sin might lead to temporary pleasure, but in the long run, Ooh, it has yeah. major consequences. And this is the reality. It will always lead to death results. Wow. And there's a scripture in Genesis 2.15, and the consequences have always been the same, wow. death. And in Genesis 2.15, Jesus is talking to the first man, Adam, mm -hmm. and he begins to lay down the law. And he's letting them know, look, you could eat of all the trees in the garden, but there's one tree. Make sure you don't eat of, it, eat of it, because if you eat of that tree, you will surely die. So he told them, look, you could eat of all the trees, but 
If you eat of this tree, you know what to do. And if you don't do it, it's sin. And the result of sin will be death every time. Wow. And you're talking about death. Is that a physical death? Is that spiritually? Is it emotionally? What does that word death mean? Well, it's both. It's both. Uh, what, when, when God created Adam and Eve, they were created to live forever. God's plan for mankind has always been eternity. And it was not just yeah. eternity. It was eternity with him. When God created mankind, this is what would happen. Adam and Eve would talk to God literally every day. Oh. The scripture says that God would walk the gardens with him and her. Oh. Just think about this. They weren't praying to God yeah. and he wasn't seen. Right. They were talking, talking to, God to God and yeah. physically walking with him wow. every single day. What an experience. We need to know that because that's God's original plan and it's still his plan for us today. What does God want? God wants a relationship with us. But this wow. was the problem. When they sin, yeah. death was brought upon their lives. Now yeah. they would physically die. Right. But another word for death means this, separated. Separate. They were separated. They were separated. That also means loss. They, see, sin always leads to loss. Yeah, it always leads to separation from the good things in our lives. That's yes, why the more we sin, the more depressed we are. That's right. The more we sin, the angry we get. Right. The more we sin, the more tormented we are. It, what right. I mean by that. The peace leaves, the joy leaves, right. actually healthy relationships leave. leave. Right. So sin always leads That's to right. separation of good in our lives, but so also true. means misery. Misery. Yeah. So sin always oh. produces death, which also means misery yeah, yeah. that starts here on the earth. And I want you to wow. get this. As we live a life of sin, that means we know it's wrong and we continue to do it. This is what happens. Our lives go from one level of misery to another level of misery, to another lower level of misery, yeah, not higher, there, lower right. levels of misery, and to the point that some people wow. actually commit suicide right. because they can't handle the pressure. And I got That's good news right. for you. I know we're covering the consequence, but Jesus covered the consequence. Yes. So, but the problem with this misery yeah. is that it could continue to extend into eternal oh, life. Yes, right. And I want you to get this. The word death also means hell. Yes, wow. That's a scary word, wow. but it means that. Wow. How about misery too? Eternal life. What about family? What about kids? Could this be passed down to your kids as well? Well, the, the thing is about our lifestyles of sin, they're always passed on to our children. Mm -hmm. Have you ever noticed that? Have you ever uh, noticed that you maybe said, Mom, Mom, I never ever want to be like you, and you end up being just like her? <laughs> Oh, you, yeah. or or uh, exactly grandpa's right. a, a, a drug addict. Yeah. Then then grand then the son's a yeah. drug addict, wow. and then the son is. It, but it goes deeper. It goes deeper. It's just, I know. The idea here is is that sin not only affects you, but it actually affects everything you're attached to. Wow. Thank you, Pastor, for sharing that. As you're talking about to sin brings separation. What are some of the things that sin separates us from? Okay. The first thing that sin separates us from is God. Mm. So sin separates us from God. Wow. There's a scripture in Ephesians 2, 5. Look at this. It says, even when we were spiritually dead. Now get this idea. Wow. It's saying spiritually dead. Spiritually Why? Dead. Why are we spiritually dead? We're separated from God. What separated us from God? Our sin. Look at this. Wow. When we were spiritually dead and separated from him, him from God, from him. because of our yes. sins. So what wow. separates us from God? Our, Our sins. sins. So the enemy knows if he causes us to live a sinful life, this is what happens. Our communication is disconnected. Wow. Our joy is disconnected. Right. The enemy is always trying to separate us from God. But wow. you could be separated for eternity. That's, and that's right. a whole nother subject. Wow. And that's why Jesus came. He died on the cross. He resurrected. He forgives us of our sin. He gets us back with God. What, would, what else does um, sin separate us from? Sin also separates us from peace. Mm. From peace. Um, I, wow. And I think one of the greatest deficits we have today is we have no, no peace. peace. Wow. That means we can't rest. Right. How do we know we That's have right. no peace? We have to constantly be on the phone, constantly yeah. watching TV, constantly have noise. Yeah. We can't stand, stand just a quiet room just hearing our own voice. 
yeah. hearing the voice of God. We've yeah, lost we a sense lost of that. peace. And the sure scripture have. says in Romans 3, 16, it says this is the this is the yeah. end result of sin. Yeah. Destruction and misery always follow them. Who? Those who are separated from God. Wow. They don't know where to find peace. I got some good news wow. for you. If today you don't know where to find peace, Jesus is Jesus says this. I'm the prince of peace. Yes. Jesus says, I'll give you a peace that the world cannot give you. But the reality is, wow. apart from Jesus, we lose yeah, peace. That's exactly There's no right. tranquility in our spirit. We can't rest. We got to take wow. a pill to go to sleep. Yeah, we got to take a pill to wake up. Yeah, We're just, we have no peace. We got to take drugs to numb ourselves because we have no peace. And wow. there's almost a voice yeah. that's speaking, that's, that's right. tormenting that's us. That's exactly right. And you're going to receive peace today in Jesus' yes. name. In this broadcast, in this show, we're going to be praying for you guys. Get ready for the peace of God. Yes. So sin separates us, number one, from God. Number two, peace. And number three, pastor, what does it separate sin us from? Sin also separates us from freedom. Um, freedom. Sin is addictive. Wow. Um, the devil doesn't always tell you, hey, you know, if you, if you, you get high with me or you, you drink with me or <laughs> you watch this porn site, you know what? I'm going to take over. And you're going to be addicted. And there's going to be a day that you're going to want to stop yes. and you won't be able to stop. You're going to be totally out of control. Wow. Sin, I want you to get this, always leads to slavery. Wow. Slavery of destruction. Slavery of misery. And slavery of bad habits. Wow. And the scripture says this in Romans 6.16. It says, mm -hmm. don't you realize that you become, look at this. The slave of, of whatever you choose wow. to obey or wow. you become a slave. See, we're creatures of habit. Yeah, we are. You become a slave. And you know what's so good about this? We could develop good habits. That's good. Yeah. And we can develop bad habits. But look at this. Right. You're, you become a slave of whatever you choose to obey. You can be a slave to sin, which leads, leads to, death. to death. So that means wow. if we become a slave to sin, that means we're addicted to wow. sin. This is what's going to be sin, death, Sin, death, wow. sin, death, sin, mm -hmm. loss, sin, misery, sin, oh. guilt, sin, shame, sin. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> That's what it's going to be <laughs> over and it. over. And we're going to be in a cycle of it because sin and death always go together. But we don't wow. need to be a slave to no, this. Because look no. what the scripture says. Or you can choose. choose. I want this. We have a choice. We can choose. To obey God, which leads to righteous to living. Righteous so if we wow. choose to follow God, this is what it turns into. A habit of living right. Wow. A habit of love. A habit of joy. A habit of forgiveness. A habit, uh, even emotion, to have wow. some peace in our lives. We can get into the right habits with the power of God. Wow, that's We need powerful. to be saved. That's yes, all. we need to be saved. And we've covered the two parts again. We're going through the gospel. What are they? The third part, Pastor, if sin separates us from God... How do we restore that relation with God? How do we get right standing with God? And that's really going in to part three of the gospel. Okay, so let's just review this. Part number one, we've all sinned. We've all sinned. Part number two, the consequence for our sin is, is death. death. And that's a, like, for sure thing. The Bible says, whatever a man sows, he shall reap. Guaranteed, okay? And now part number three of the gospel, and I love this. This is the good news yes. for every single person. Think about this. What if Jesus were to come on Easter? Wow. What if, I, and I always think crazy wow. thoughts. I go, yeah. What if God said, this is it. I want to get everybody's attention in the whole world. Wow. I'm going to shut commerce down. I'm going to shut the TV. I'm going to shut the entertainment down. I'm going to shut the, entertain, uh, the sports down. I'm going to shut everything down. Man. Because on Easter, I'm going to broadcast my message throughout the world yes, and I'm God. coming right after that. Whoa. Yes. We don't know. Yeah, we don't know. We don't know because something Ooh. like that could happen. I'm, yeah, I'm not saying it's happening. All <laughs> I'm saying is if it did happen, then what we're talking about is the most important thing we could talk about because even right now, the coronavirus is coming and it's going. That's right. It's That's going. Right. As a matter of fact, they're just yeah. saying right now that it's leveling yeah, out. It's leveling and out. Yeah, and, we're and I was looking at the stock market today. People yeah. are investing again. Yeah. All they hear is a little good news and they go, okay, I can Here invest now. Yeah. It looks like we're almost over That's it. Right. But That's I want right. you to get this. Let's listen to the good news of Jesus Christ. Yes. That every single one of us, though we've sinned, we can be forgiven. Yes, though God. we've sinned and, and we have consequences that we're storing up, that 
we could get this. We could be forgiven. We could be set free and we could have a brand new life. And we don't have to live a life of misery, a life of, life of addiction. We don't have to live a life uh, in a yes, constant yes, cycle of free. death and loss. Yes. We could start winning with Jesus Christ. Part Man, number three. It's powerful. God loved us so much. I want you to get this is a good part. God loved us so much that he sent his son to save us from our sin and his penalty. Man, that's God, news. this is the good news. God loved us so much that he sent his son to pay the consequences for what we've done. Oh, wow, man, that's, that, that don't even sound fair. It what doesn't. isn't fair to Jesus? No. Because he was innocent. That's and right. he took all, you know what that's called? Grace. Grace. It's called mercy. It's called oh. unmerited favor. You know what it means? It's I love you so much. Oh. I'm going to send my son to yes. pay the price of the sins that you've committed. I love you. Wow. I want to erase the sin off your record because I want to restore the relationship I had with Adam. I want to have it with you. Oh. I want to walk with you. I want to talk with you. And you know what's even greater? God wants to live in you. Wow. Oh. Peace wants to live in you. Joy wants to live in you. Freedom wants to live in you. And then God wants wow. you to live with him forever and ever. Look at I the scripture. That. And you say, well, yeah. how did God show his love? Yeah. Well, God showed his love by sending his son, his son. to be sacrificed for our That's sins. this week, Easter. Friday is Good Friday. Wow. And, well, well, this is important. Man. We got to talk about this because this is what Easter is all about. It, In 1 John 4, 9 and 10, it says, God showed, look at this, how much he loved us. By sending his son, one, I mean, his one and only son into the world so that we might have eternal life through him. Wow. This is real love. This is real love. Yes. Not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son as a sacrifice. He sent his son as a wow. sacrifice to take away our sins. This Man. is a story about love. God loves you and he can't stand being separated from you. Wow. And he says, the one thing that's separating you from me is your sin. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to send my son to pay the price for all your sins so your sins can be removed, so your sins can be forgiven, mm. so me and you can get back into relationship. I know you're empty, and wow. I know there's something missing in your life, and I, I know you've been searching, but yes. the thing that's missing in all of our lives is Jesus Christ. We were created to have a relationship yes. with God, and God has made a way for us to have a relationship with him because the consequences for our sins have been paid for by the blood of by the life, wow. by the suffering and the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Man, that's awesome. And so we did the sin and Jesus paid the ultimate price. Right. I like the statement you put here. Jesus endured the punishment for our sins because he loved us so much. And you have to think Man. about that. Why would Jesus be willing to endure wow. such pain and hurt and suffering? Wow. There's a reason. He just loves you loves so, so much. much. Wow. And the level of love you have for a person determines the level of sacrifice you're willing to make. Yeah. So the more you love someone, the more you sacrifice for them. That's There's right. a scripture in Isaiah 53, yeah. 4. And, and look at this. Yet it was our wow. weaknesses, weaknesses he carried. He carried. Wow. It was his weaknesses. It was our sorrows yeah. that weighed him. It was his, wow. our depression yeah. that weighed him down. And we thought his trouble... His, his troubles were a punishment from God. Uh -huh. So when, when they were looking at Jesus suffering on the cross, they were looking at, at him as a criminal. Yeah. A matter of fact, yeah. he was crucified between two thieves. Two, two thieves, yeah, criminals. Two criminals. That's exactly right. And, and they looked at it. He was among the criminals. Yeah. And they're saying he's dying because he's a criminal. Right. And they were talking about that. We thought you were punished from God, a punishment for his own sins. For his own sins. Own but he was sins. pierced wow. for our rebellion, for our rebellion. crushed for our sins. He was beaten so we could be whole. Wow. He was whipped so we could be healed. All of us like sheep have strayed away. We have left God's path to follow our own. Yet the Lord laid on him wow. the sins of oh, us Lord. all. Wow, now, in this portion of scripture, it talks about even the sicknesses yeah, were put on sicknesses, him. Yeah, because so before man sinned, yeah. there was no sickness was no on sickness. earth. That's right. There was 100% divine health. Wow. So all the sickness, there was no yeah. depression. All the sorrow and depression was put on right, him. Right. So every consequence of sin was put on him. Wow. Judgment was put on him. Yeah. Punishment, Punishment was put on him. Yeah. Beatings, Beating, abuse. There was shame. no such thing as abuse in the Garden of yeah, Eden. No, there wasn't. Sin opened the door 
to demonic abuse. That's exactly and some right. of us even were watching and you're in an abusive situation and you're in a cycle of abuse. And this is what Jesus is saying. I was abused, so you no longer need yes. to be under that spirit of abuse. I will set you free. I will heal thank your broken you heart. God. I will set you free from the depression. I will give you a new start. Yes, I paid God. the price. You no longer need to live in that condition. Wow, I love he it. He loves us so I much. Look what he it. went thank through. Thank you, Jesus. And you know, the last question is, so how can we be, be forgiven? How can we receive that eternal life? What do we have to do? Well, God loved us so much that he made a way for us to be forgiven and receive eternal life by just, just believing, believing in wow. Jesus Christ. Love it. God loved us so much wow. that he made a way, I want you to get this, for us wow. to be saved, for us to be forgiven, for us yes. to receive eternal life, for us to be healed, to, for, that, for his yes. life to be transferred to us, for us to enter back into a loving relationship with God so we're no longer separated. He said this, wow. I made it super easy. I already, I already did it all. Yes. I died. I suffered. I paid the consequences. The road is clear. All wow. you have to do is when I say come, just believe wow. and come. Yes. Believe. Yes, just believe. Just trust just in trust Jesus. In what he did on the cross. And we could wow. be saved. We could have eternal life. And we no longer need to fear death. That means when you're a believer, you don't have to fear death because you know this. No. You're saved. You're right. forgiven. And you receive yes, the free gift of eternal right. life. Look at this scripture. Wow. We know it all. We've heard the scripture, yes, but let's yes. read it. In John 3, 15, it says this. So that everyone, everyone. who? Everyone. Who believes. Yes. Not who believe. does or joins, yeah. becomes a member of a church. Yeah. Or, or has obeyed perfectly. But it says, mm. so that everyone who believes in him, Jesus, will have yes. eternal yes. life. When we believe in Jesus, yes, God forgives God. us and his spirit moves into our lives and he gives us the free gift of eternal life. Mm. For this is how God loved the world. Oh, there it goes. He gave his one and only son so that everyone who believes in him will not perish, yes, but have eternal life. Wow. Yes. Look what it says. God did not send his son into the world to judge the world, but to save the world through him. Wow. Maybe you've had a wrong image of God yes. and you're thinking he's just judging me. He's just pointing out all my flaws. And God says, no, that's not me. God says, I didn't send my son to condemn you. I didn't send my son to judge you. I didn't send my son to to punish you I sent my son to save you to save yes. you from the misery yes. to save yeah. you from the addiction yes. to save you from being separated from God to save you from the judgment of God and the wrath of God to come God loves you yes. and you know what he wants simple he wants to share his life with you and what you're looking for and what I'm looking for, what our friends are looking for and our family's looking for is one thing. We're looking for God. We're just right. looking in all the wrong places. Right. And we've made other things our God. And for some, drugs is a God. And lust is a God. And porn is a God. And lying is a God. And gambling is a God. And whatever your thing that you look for, say, that makes me happy. But does it really make you happy? It makes you happy for a moment. Right. But after that, the misery keeps, comes, it comes. The depression gets deeper. The fear gets deeper. Today's your day. Yes. God so, God, for God so loved the world that he already sent his son. It's already finished. Jesus already did it. And all you got to do and I got to do is this. Believe. Yes. That's believe. Yes, just believe. So we're going to say a prayer right now. Yes. This is not hard. Thank if you're God. saying, Pastor... I'm going to ask you a question. If today were your last day on earth, do you know where you spend eternity? Are you saying, I don't know, Pastor. I think, I know I'm a sinner and I've messed up and I, and I feel like I'm separated from God right now. Well, I got good news. It's not that you came to God. Jesus is coming Jesus to you right now. Us. He's done it all. And, you, and you're saying, yes, I, I want change. I want a new beginning. I want to be set free. I'm tired of the misery. I'm tired of the torment. I'm tired of the sleepless nights. I'm tired of having no peace. And I'm done. I'm ready to repent of my sin. I'm tired of the compromise because as I'm compromised, it just gets darker. 
I'm done. After this season of this coronavirus and Easter season, I'm not going to come out the same. Today I'm making a choice, a choice to listen and obey and receive Jesus. Yes. And if you believe in Jesus, that he died for your sins, he rose from the dead, he'll forgive you, yes. he'll cleanse you, yes. and he'll give you a brand new life. He'll make you whole, he'll make you complete, he'll even heal your broken heart. Yes. Today's your day. Let the confusion go. Let the fear yes. go. Yes. Let the doubts yes. go. Open your heart today. And the Bible says if you believe in your heart that Jesus Christ died for your sins and he rose from the dead, and you're willing to confess that with your mouth, you'll be saved. I want everybody in your living room, even you're by yourself in your car or wherever you're at in your room and you're listening to this, I want you to pray with me. Yes, today, God. Jesus is right with you. Will yes. you let him in your heart today? Will you yes. open up the heart, your heart? Yes. We're going to pray right now. And as we say this prayer, you're going to be forgiven and receive the free gift of eternal yes, life. God. You're going to be born again. You're going to have a brand new life. You're going to live for Jesus. Yes. Bow your heads, close your eyes, repeat after me. Say, Jesus. Jesus. I thank you. I thank you. For dying on the cross. For dying on the cross. For paying the price. Paying the price. For all my sins. For all my sins. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. For suffering. For suffering. In my place. In my place. To deliver me. To deliver me. From a lifestyle. From a lifestyle. Of misery. Of misery. Addiction. Addiction. Sin. Sin. I'm done. I'm done. Jesus. Jesus. I open my heart. I open my heart. And I ask you, Jesus. And I ask you, Jesus. Come in. Come in. Fill me with your spirit. Fill me with your spirit. Make me a new person. Make me a new person. Give me your peace. Give me your peace. Fill my heart with your love. Fill my heart with your love. Save me. Save me. I receive you, Jesus. I receive you, Jesus. And the free gift. And the free gift. Of eternal life. Eternal life. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. I pray. I pray. Amen. Amen. Now, if you said that Amen. prayer, I want to say a big congratulations. Yes. If you're in a living room and you said that prayer, the Bible says, if you deny me before man, I'll deny you before my father. This is what I'm saying. Raise your hand. Say, Pastor, I said that prayer and I meant it. Raise your hand right now. Even if you're, yes. in the, I said this before, even if you're in a car all by yourself, by faith, just raise your hand. Faith, I'm ready. I gave hand. my life to Jesus. I meant that prayer. I said it. If you said that prayer, yes. I want to say this. Congratulations. Yes. Congratulations. You have eternal life. Hey, Way fam. Thanks for tuning in. I pray that you receive the blessing from this message. And if you would like to support this ministry, click the link below. And until then, see you next time.